Muhammad, peace be upon his soul. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From among all the prophets, Muhammad was the last, as his was a mission of the greatest task. There was only moral degeneration. People clung to idol adoration. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome in a new episode of The Prophet Teaches, reflecting on the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is a story that I would like actually to share with you. A man who was writing down the ahadith, the prophetic traditions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, copying them in the box. And one day he was questioning himself, do I have an intention behind the deed? And he answered in the negative. So, he wrote the following sentence. La ajiduniya. I do not have an intention. And he left the page blank without writing one letter. He was questioning himself. Do I have an intention? He didn't find. In fact, he left for us a very deep lesson that we need to ask ourselves before acting and doing anything. Do I have an intention? Do I dedicate it for the sake of Allah or not? Stay with us. We are still explaining the hadith of intentions of the Prophet ﷺ. Let us listen to the text and then have further discussions, inshaAllah. Narrated on the authority of Omar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, I heard the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, say, Actions are but by intention, and every man shall have but that which he intended. Thus he whose migration was for Allah and his Messenger, his migration was for Allah and his Messenger. And he whose migration was to achieve some worldly benefit, or to take some woman in marriage, his migration was for that which he migrated. Collected by Bukhari and Muslim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. An Abi Hafsin Umar ibn al Khattab radiallahu anhu kal. Samiatu Rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ayakul. Inna mal a'malu bin niyat. Wa inna malikul imri immanawa. Faman kanat hijratuhu ilallahi wa rasulih. Fahijratuhu ilallahi wa rasulih. ومن كانت هجرته لدنيا يصيبها أو امرأة ينكحها فهجرته إلى ما هاجر إليه. Our respected viewers, at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, he invited a group of men to eat in his house. They were surrounding the food and one of them started eating with his left side or with his left hand. So Umar ibn al-Khattab, as you know, he was very decisive and he started commanding him with good and telling him eat with your right hand the man answered I cannot and Umar al Khattab repeated it again eat with your right hand and the man started eating with the left hand so after they finished Umar al Khattab approached him and told him oh brother I was asking you to eat with your right hand so why you did not respond to me from the beginning what is the reaction of the man? What did the man do? The man, in fact, took out his hand. And it was no hand. It was cut off in the cause of Allah in one of the battles. He was amazed to tell Umar ibn al-Khattab in front of the people that he was engaged in fighting for the cause of Allah and he lost his arm or his hand. This is sincerity. When you are hiding your deed, when you don't like to be shown or seen by the people, when you want to 
when you would like actually to be satisfied with Allah alone. Allah is the one to observe you. So you are satisfied with him and you don't like the others even to look or to pay attention to you. This is the same case of a person, his name is Uwais al-Qarni. Uwais al-Qarni is one of the people who lived at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, but he did not see the Prophet. So he is not technically called a companion. He is a follower, he is a tabi'i. And the Prophet ﷺ talked about him. The man, the reason why he didn't meet the Prophet ﷺ, he sacrificed companionship with him mainly for the sake of just serving his mother because he, is, he was caring about his mother. And the Prophet ﷺ said that. He sacrificed a great reward and a great honor to be a companion, a sahabi, because he's just serving his mother. The Prophet ﷺ said, A man, his name is Uwais al-Qarni, from Murad. This is the name of his family. From a tribe which is called Qarn, from Yemen. is going to come to you one day. So he, I will tell you a sign, the Prophet ﷺ is telling the companions, that I will tell you a sign that he had a, a disease in his skin. He has a leprosy. And there were a remnant uh, a spot which is still diseased like the spot or the amount of a dinar or a coin. So the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever sees, he's telling the companion, the Prophet ﷺ is telling the companion, whoever sees Uwais al-Qarni, you should ask him to seek Allah's forgiveness for you. Umar ibn al-Khattab, after the death of the Prophet ﷺ, was waiting for the people in Hajj, in pilgrimage, asking the delegations coming from Yemen, telling them, have you seen Uwais al-Qarni? And every time they miss him and they say, we left him serving his mother. On the last occasion, he found him and he asked them about his name. What's your name? My name is Uwais. What is your, the name of your family? And he asked him the same and he told him the same description that the Prophet ﷺ told him in the hadith. So Uwais al-Qarni was looking to Umar al-Khattab and Umar said, I ask you, to seek Allah's forgiveness for me. And he said, you are a commander of the faithful. You are one of the 10 people giving the glad news of the Jannah, the glad tidings of the Jannah. You are one of the top 10 people. You want me ask Allah's forgiveness for you? And he said, because I heard the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, a man from Qarn will come to you. And if you see him, ask him to seek Allah's forgiveness for you. So I'm asking you to seek forgiveness for me. And he did. He sought the forgiveness for Umar ibn al-Khattab. And later on, Umar asked him, where are you going? He said, I'm going to Iraq. So he said, let me talk to the ruler of Iraq so he will take care of you. And Uwais al-Qarni says, no, I would like to be with the ghabara in nas with the common people. I don't like to be distinguished. I don't like to be recognized. Later on, the ruler of Yemen himself heard about the hadith of Umar. The statement that Umar did, and he returned back to Uwais in Yemen, asking him to make dua invocation for him. And Uwais said, you are traveling, your dua is accepted, so you don't need my dua, you don't need my invocations. And then he said, but I hear the Prophet's hadith, that your dua or your supplications is definitely accepted. And if you swear by Allah, on Allah, Allah will accept your dua. And then he made the invocation for him. And later on, the people started visiting Uwais. What happened for Uwais? Uwais disappeared. We don't know the place where he died. We don't know where he was buried. Sincerity? Yes, it is sincerity. He doesn't like to be recognized. He doesn't like to show himself before the people that I'm the one that the Prophet talked to me. Look how his little deeds compared to the great noble deed of companionship with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Allah said about the Sahaba, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has already give them the stamp of approval, the stamp of perfection. He sacrificed that for the sake of just serving his mother. This is just a hint about how to be a sincere person. 
Later on, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, one of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, and one of the people given the glad tidings of the Jannah. When the trouble happened after the murder of Uthman ibn Affan, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas left the Medina and he secluded and left in the desert. One day he saw a rider coming and approaching him. And he said, Oh Allah, I seek refuge from the evil that kind of rider brings to me. He saw the rider and found him that it is his son. His son said, Oh my father, you left the people fighting for the kingdom of Muslim. And you are here being secluded in the desert? He said, Oh my son, my example compared to the others is like a people who were walking in a caravan. They, on just the blink of an eye, storm is coming everywhere and the darkness fell and then they didn't recognize the way whether to go right or left or to go straight some of them said we will go right and the others said straight and I prefer to stay on my position until the darkness is removed and the path is clear and then I will take it because the three groups agree on the fact that the spot that is they stopped on is a right destination. And he said, I remember the hadith of the Prophet that Allah in Allah yuhibbul abda taqiyya naqiyya al khafi. We need to underline this sentence. Allah loves his slave, the one who is ghani, he is self content. He is self-content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sure. He is concealed, hidden from the people. And he is pious, God-fearing. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be of those who are self-content, concealed from the eyes of the people, recognized only by the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to provide us with sincerity. Have a short break. Come back, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Amid the confusion, the chaos, and the pain, a man emerged and Muhammad was his name. Roda TV is launching a new website for you, your family, and friends. Everyone. A new look, top level designs, and better technology. You will be able to ping Hoda TV's new website and read all our articles, surf our video archives, chat live on Hoda's forum, vote, support our programs, and give us your suggestions or criticisms. We welcome your thoughts. We strive to please all our viewers worldwide. Hoda, a light in every home. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Again, explaining ikhlas. One of the righteous ancestors said, to close all the gates and all the eyes watching you and you open your eye for only one which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see him. If you don't see him while you're acting, he certainly looks and observes you. We have... Two of our brothers, uh, Brother Ibrahim and Brother Yasser, also taking the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ of asking questions on the hadith. So, what is your reaction to this hadith, or what the things that you need to yeah. ask about? Um, well, you mentioned a hadith which says that uh, Allah loves the, the pious, the pure, and the person who uh, reconciles his deeds. So, um, so, so does mean that a person has to reconcile all his deeds? And his acts of worship from the people, or uh, because I, I think it's uh, it's difficult to do that. Yes, exactly. So this is a good question because Sayyidina Sa'd, may Allah be pleased with him, and he said, Allah Sata likes the pious, the one who conceals mm -hmm. his deeds. Surely, that's why some of the companions uh, actually they only reckon the good deeds that they did, things which they hide from the eyes of the people, yeah. and it is reckoned that one of them used to fast all the days, except for sure the days of Eid. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it just taking his breakfast in the morning. And when his 
wife is asking him, he says, I will eat it in the road. And in the road, he is to donate it. And mm -hmm. then he reaches his brothers or his friends. They ask him, did you take your breakfast? He says, yes, I took it from home. Mm -hmm. And when he returns back, he takes just the supper or the, <laughs> the meal with his wife. And he conceals the fact that he was fasting. And other they used to do a lot of good things without being observed. Like, for example, there is a story of one of righteous people. He, he was doing his charity, his act of charity. And he used to have the food mm -hmm. and put it on the door before Fajr, on the yeah. door of the orphans. And yeah. they don't know him. But they realized that after his death. Because when that habit stopped, yeah, they realized yeah, that yeah. this is a person who died who used to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is recommended and it's preferable for the person to hide his deeds. But sometimes making it public for the people to follow you, yeah. mm -hmm. as long as you yeah. are safe yeah. that your intention and your sincerity will not be spoiled, yeah. you can do it. Mm -hmm. That's why the Prophet وسلم, when he invited the Sahaba one day, to provide his, their brothers uh, of the charity. And the Prophet ﷺ used to recite for them some verses from the Qur'an. And at the least, he found one of them taking a bunch of food and putting it in, this, in the sack. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the Prophet ﷺ praised them and said, مَنْ سَنَّ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ حَسَنَ سُنَّةً حَسَنَ فَلَا وَاجْرُهَا So he initiates something which is good. Allah will give him a reward for that. And a reward for the people who follow his action. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need to do those actions in front of the others. So the criterion mm -hmm. here is as long as there is no spoiler, yeah. there is no invalidator of your sincerity, yeah. or you don't do it merely to be praised by the others, it will be accepted and there is no problem. Yeah, okay. Either to make it in public or, or to, to make it in secret, secret inshallah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Shaykhana, some uh, scholars say that uh, sincerity is the most difficult thing upon the soul because the soul itself has nothing from it. So according to them, sincerity is something difficult. Then how can I know that I'm a sincere worship? Uh, it is, it is a difficult. Yeah. But we need also, we don't like to go to the extreme that it is impossible. No, it is not it's impossible, but exactly. it is difficult. It is difficult because mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it as one of the conditions, yeah. one of the prerequisites, the requirements of any act. Yeah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not live or does not put a burden which mm -hmm. is unbearable to his slaves. Yeah. Uh, but in fact, there are some signs that may show the person that he is inshallah on the straight path. Yeah. Number one, uh, he doesn't like to be praised by the others. Because for any deed, there are two conditions. Number one, it must be dedicated for Allah, and this is sincerity. Hmm. Number two, it must be in conformity with the sharia, with the, sharia, yeah. with the basic rules, how the Prophet ﷺ acted upon that. So I do not in innovate, I cannot actually initiate a, a new worship, act of worship, yeah. and I say this, I will approach it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I will mm. please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that. Mm. So there must be ikhlas and ittiba, mm. sincerity and following the path of the Messenger mm. mm. How did he made it in this way? Mm. This is so important. For sincerity, there are two diseases. Yeah. And we need to care about them. Number one, showing off. Yeah. That you do an act to be seen by the others. Mm -hmm. And this happens actually during the act or before the act. So you go to pray, nice voice in front of the others. So the people will praise you, thank you. They will have a lot of respect for you. And if it happens yeah. after the deed itself. Exactly. Sometimes people praises, praise mm -hmm. a person after he performed a good deed. He intended it purely for Allah. But after finishing it, they start praising him exactly jazakumullah khan. and we will talk about this yeah. how when the praise comes before or after yeah so if it comes actually before the deed and you are expecting it from the people this is an invalidator it will mm -hmm. invalid your deed mm -hmm. because you are not doing it for allah you are doing it for just the people to praise you yeah. to yeah. respect you to love you yeah. and this is not accepted but when one day for example a person did something good and the people started coming subhanallah wallahi I loved you, O oh brother, for the sake of Allah, because you did such and such. He will feel humble and he will not go with him. Mm. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet ﷺ was asked about that. Mm. He was asked about a person being praised after the deed is done. Mm. And the Prophet ﷺ says, ذَلِكَ عَاجِلُ بُشْرَ الْمُؤْمِنِ This is a glad news and the glad tidings yeah. of accepting his deed. Mm -hmm. And it is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So, but he should not actually feel satisfied with the people praise 
and he will stop. Yes. Yeah. He must go ahead because this may be a trial. It may be a test by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. Mm. And the second disease that we were mentioning about the deed yeah. is arrogance. When a person is arrogant about the deed, mm -hmm. so it is ujb. They call it uh, ujb. He attributes or he ascribes the source of doing good to himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you, for example, you are praying, when you are praying after the finish, after you finish your prayer, you say, what is the first thing you say? After saying, Assalamu alaikum, Assalamu alaikum. Astaghfirullah. You say, Astaghfirullah. Why? You made a sin. Yes, you were yeah. making a sin. No. You're praying. Yes. Yeah. Because you are putting in your mind that you are doing something which is not qualified. Yeah. yeah. You are doing something which is you still feel a shortcoming mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in your praises. In praising Allah. That's why one of the scholars said, Oh Allah, praise yourself on behalf of yourself. Yeah. Because we have a lot of shortcomings. When you say even subhanallah or alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, you need to make double and triple and four times alhamdulillah again. You know what is the reason? Number one, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you a Muslim, that's why you praise him. Allah taught you how to praise him, that you, that's why you praise him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the opportunity to just say thanks Allah and that's why you need to thank Allah for this. So, when you are making an act of worship, you feel that you're still feeling short. Yes. Yeah. You do not fulfill the obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the signs of sincerity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number one, you do a thing and you still have a shortcoming. Like a person is doing, writing an article or writing an essay, yeah. or somebody is doing his job, and it's still, there is still something in the finishing. There is a something thing to perfect it. I'm, yeah. I mean, need to do it more. I mean, need to, to be more. He's enthusiastic. Yeah. He is, sometimes he feel shy, he feel modest, he feel humble yeah. before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So if a person makes the thing, having the good intention at the beginning, yeah. not expecting anything from the people, trying to hide it as much as he can. Yeah. And also, he does not have any arrogance and he doesn't show off, he should also have certainty in Allah that Allah accepts the good deeds. Yeah. Yeah. But he shouldn't have an extravagant, what you call excessive hope in himself. Yeah. Because Umar, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib used to say, or one of the righteous companions of the Prophet وسلم, and all of them are righteous, said, mm -hmm. if I know that there is only two raka'ats are accepted yeah. from me, I would actually wish to die and meet Allah because Allah said in the Quran, yeah. Allah accepts only yeah. the pious, the God-fearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm not sure whether I'm a good-fearing person or not. Yeah. So you still have hope in Allah subhanahu that he will accept yeah. and you are going, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept and he may not accept, yeah. it's up to him. Yeah. You perfect your deed to the extreme and you still have shortcoming. But... Allah accepts mm -hmm. because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the good deeds of his slaves and we have a lot of proofs for that. Yeah. For example, you remember the story of the three sincere persons mm -hmm. that Allah showed with them that he, they are sincere. Mm -hmm. You remember the story? Yeah, it sorry. happened for the people uh, before Islam. They went to the cave. Um, exactly, yeah. the people who entered the cave yeah. mm -hmm. and it was blocked on them. Oh, yes. One of them and, and everybody when they were in the middle of that dilemma, yeah. mm -hmm. everybody started making dua and we need to have a good point from this hadith mm -hmm. because sincerity alleviates the harms and the problems that you may fall in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if you have a problem allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will solve that problem for you because mm -hmm. of your sincerity yeah that's why when the people were kept on the jail on that cave and nobody saw them mm -hmm. yes, nobody yes. sees them at all yes, and yes. so Allah except as you know it's allah subhanahu wa yes, ta'ala yes, yes, for yes, sure yes. and then they started making dua raising their hands yeah. one of them said, Oh Allah, I made, one day yeah. I was serving my father and mother mm, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. and I was, uh, was a shepherd and he started giving them the milk and he spent the whole day. And the other oh, the gave another yeah. example and the third gave, yeah. and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviated their pain yeah. and made the hardship easy yeah. for them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solved the problem yes. for them. Yes. This is the, what we call this fruit of sincerity. sincerity yeah. I think the time is out, we run out of time, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of our good deeds and to provide us with sincerity and tranquility. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Amid the confusion, the chaos and the pain A man emerged and Muhammad was his name And walking with nothing but Allah as his aid And the mark of a prophet between his shoulder blades In a cave in Mount Hira the revelation came Read, O oh Muhammad, read in Allah's name. May the blessings of Allah be on Al Mustafa. None besides him could have been Al Mujtaba. Muhammad, peace be upon his soul.